Now, next topic on the board. This is a, a pretty big one. I wanted to hit it the other day. Uh, obviously, Nick Rolovich is, you know, he, they're, they're going to have a legal battle. There will be lawyers, as they say. And Rolo is suing Washington State, but we did not get to some of the candidates. Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to spend long on this, but there's a whole slew of candidates involved here. My question to you, Chris, do you think that there are potential candidates that look at this situation as, like, Washington State is willing to fire a football coach rather than stand up for their guy, uh, this might be a place that I don't want to get involved. Does that kind of cut down the candidate pool? What now? Repeat. How, what, how did so, you word that? That's, so that's, so my question here, it, it does, does Washington State's handling of Nick Rolovich and the way that that whole situation went down, as opposed to trying to find a way to give him a religious exemption or whatever, does that cut down the candidate pool for the Cougars head coaching position? I would say, yeah, but honestly, I don't think so. I, I think anybody who's a G5 coach at a smaller – now, they're not going to pull a big G5, okay? Like, you know, you're not going to go get a coach that's making, you know, $1.8 to $2 million to come work for your three, you know, yeah. and, and, and move into Pullman. So you're going to have to change somebody's life. Like, basically, when Rolovich took that job, you know, it doubled his salary. That was a big deal, you know? Yeah. I, so, so you know, but any of these G five coaches making you know a million bucks, eight hundred thousand, something like that, they would all come for the three. So they they just figure out a way to get around all that and justify it to themselves because it's life changing money. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. I think everybody that's on this list, it might make sense. I'll go on and, and I'll go on and read off some of these right quick. Jay Norvell at Nevada, I think, is gettable for them. I think he has stated yeah. he wants to be at a G five or a P five school. He wants to prove his, you know, his come up and he wants to show that he can be a coach in a league like that. And I think that would be a good grab for him. I Kalen, agree. Kalen DeBoer from Fresno State is another one. Uh I think he'd be an insanely great hire. See, here's the problem. If I'm Kalen, I don't know that I leave Fresno for, for Pullman. I don't know that I do either. I, I think See, Kalen I was gonna thinking the same ones. thing about Brady Brady Hope, which I think they want to go with an offensive guy anyway, it doesn't matter. But, like, I wouldn't leave San Diego State for him. I think the no. Mountain West right now is, is not a whole lot different than the Pac-12. And you're at the – probably the the school that spends the least amount of money on football other than maybe Arizona in the Pac-12. Yeah, the least uh, the least amount of resources, et cetera. Uh, Caitlin, I think, can get a, a bigger job. Uh, Troy Calhoun from Air Force was brought up. I don't know that they can get that done. Like, I, I don't know why – I don't know why Troy would leave what he's doing at Air Force for that job, um, I, but maybe I'm different. I mean, you got a you got a different feel on that one. No, no. I mean, but like I said, these are all Mountain West guys. Jeez, I I know you and I are the minority here. Okay, I hate the concept of the quote unquote Power Five because I think some of these G five conferences are better than Power Five conferences, and this year it's proving out that man that a lot of these schools. In the Mountain West, they're better than the Pac-12. They just are. Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong about that. Jim McElwain was brought up. Would he want to get back into the uh, the P5 waters? If he wants to go to the P5 world, that I could see that. I could see a coach that went P5 at a big big school and did not do well at all. I, I could see him trying to go back up, a place where there's not a lot of standards of winning. The pressures aren't going to be on him so bad. And uh, I, I could absolutely see that. Uh, another name was Alex Grinch, the Oklahoma defensive coordinator. He was, of course, Mike Leach's defensive coordinator at Washington State that actually got that thing turned around. His scheme actually helped them get to 11 wins. Uh, I, I That could be possible, but would he want to go backwards? Because I think if you are at Oklahoma and you actually get that defense rolling, you have much bigger opportunities ahead of you as opposed to Pullman, because Pullman is on the the back end of the B five. If we are being completely honest with ourselves, right? Yeah. Joe Moorhead, another one, offensive coordinator at Oregon, of course. Maybe same situation that you were talking about with Jim McElwain. Yep. And, you know, didn't didn't pan out well at Mississippi State, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't be successful at a place at you know Washington State, right? That's right. Let's see more. Let's see another. 
Another Mountain West guy, Brent Brennan at San Jose State. They are not exactly having a great go of it this season. Nick Starkle's been out. They've been dealing with injuries all over the board. This could be one of those where San Jose State does not exactly pay their football coaches a ton of money. And he was, you know, the second guy up for the Arizona job. So if he were to get this job offer, I think he'd jump at it in a heartbeat. You feel the same? Let's see. <laughs> Did we lose you? You still here? Hey, you bring up on. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's keep on. Uh, Brent Brennan would jump at the opportunity. Jeff Grimes was brought up. Offensive coordinator at Baylor was at BYU. Maybe I don't know that his style necessarily fits what they want to do in Pullman, but maybe I'm wrong on that. You got a feel on Jeff Grimes? No, but I have a feeling on this is why really hard for defensive coaches to get head coaching jobs. This is this is evidence A through 25, all right, of why you don't want to hire a defense. I would not want to hire. I don't care how great they are. And I know that means I wouldn't hire the next Nick Saban or Bill Belichick. The game is just different, and you're asking me that every time me as a head coach get the team rolling offensively at all, my play caller is going to get hired away. Yeah. That's just going to happen. This guy's been here for one year. He's been an OC at Baylor, and now he's about to get hired away as a head coach. If you don't hire your head coach to be your play caller, this is your life, a revolving door or mediocrity. If you go six and six, nobody's going to want your head coach. You win 10 games, no one's going to want your play caller. You win 10 games, everybody's coming for your most valuable person. Yes, yes, you're 100% right. And there's not a damn thing you can do to stop it. Next name on this list is actually very similar to that. Graham Harrell, offensive coordinator at USC. You know, I could see it. You know, he was at North Texas with Seth Luttrell when they were actually doing well, you know, back several years ago. As soon as he left North Texas, they were not able to do nearly the same thing. But that would be... Somebody, if you're wanting to get back into the Mike Leach tree, uh, Graham Harrell would absolutely fit that. You know, he played at Texas Tech for him. And that could, you know, at the air raid, that kind of mess, that could work in Pullman. Graham Harrell could absolutely work. Another name that was brought up, I, I'm curious your thoughts, Jeff Banks, who is the special teams and tight ends coach at Texas. He is the recruiting coordinator there. He was the recruiting, uh, recruiting coordinator at Alabama. But if you are so used to recruiting at Alabama and Texas, why would you go to Pullman where you know you're not going to be able to get the dudes that you're used to getting, right? I mean, but this is, but nobody thinks that, right? Every one of these guys thinks that they can recruit anywhere. They think that they can be great no matter what. That no one, no one looks at themselves in the mirror, honestly, and says, I'm only good because I'm, I, I, I can sell a million tests. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but I can't sell this Pinto over here. Well, well, shit, I'm hiring you to sell Pinto. They don't look at themselves and say, I wouldn't be good at that. They think, I can sell anything. It's a, The thing that surprised me about this with Banks, like he hadn't been a coordinator at, at really any level other than you know special teams coordinator. He has not been, a, uh, obviously hadn't been a head coach. I, The boosters and whatnot, the, the board of trustees and all that involved at Washington State are the ones reportedly that are interested in him. I, I mean, maybe it makes sense if you're trying to get. Maybe you're looking for a no, culture the, the, guy. The idea that he doesn't he doesn't do anything to special teams. Urban Meyer was a special teams guy. Harbaugh was a special teams guy. Like these guys, that that, that that doesn't concern me at all. Special teams is a major part of the game, and they work with all of the players on the team, which is why they are always the ones that are promoted usually to interim head coaches uh, because they're used to it. Uh, but they, they understand running of practices and, and putting together a game plan just as much as everybody else, maybe more so than the other guys, just because they, the offensive guy just knows the offense because they never work with the other side. They don't do anything else. And the special team guy actually has to work around everybody else's plans and schedules. So they, I think they see big picture better. But like I said, I, you do what you want at the university. If I ever become an AD, I would never hire anything other than an offensive guy, and I would make sure that offensive guy is the play caller. And yeah. I would make him understand, you're the, you're the reason I hired you. If you ever stop calling plays, your other guy's going to get your job if he's good because somebody's going to hire him away. 
Yeah, just like at Ole Miss. Uh, Lane Kiffin is is great. Eventually, somebody's going to come for Jeff Levy. Like, it, it's going to happen. And, and we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting what goes on at Washington State. I doubt they make any kind of a hire at all until, you know, well after the season is done because they still got to figure out some stuff. There are people that, for whatever reason, believe that Rolovich still has a chance to take back over that job. And I would be floored beyond belief if that were to happen, especially with the lawsuit coming. I just, I do no, not Well, hang on now. But his lawsuit is with the state more than, well, his lawsuit is with the school for his money, okay? But his problem is with the state. Let, let's let say, for instance, this lawsuit is going to, you know, take a year, all right? Like, it's not going to happen tomorrow. We know that. I mean, how long ago was fruit fired? And it, it, we're just now getting to a point where I'm, I'm probably going to sue you, you know? So this thing's going to take a while. So let's say the governor is no longer the governor next time. I don't know when they're up for re-election. I don't know when they came in. Or let's just say the, the you know, the situation with COVID is no longer an emergency situation and and the mandates legally are, are, are no longer constitutional and you can't do them, right? Let's say that happens. If he hasn't burnt any any bridges with the athletic department or with the uh, with the boosters there, then why can't he just come back? I, I mean, you've got a point, but there was part of the lawsuit was was calling the AD uh, vindictive and also, I mean, it was just kind of harsh language in the uh, statement. Who's more valuable to that school, Rolovich or the AD? I, I mean, you do have a valid point there. I just I, there I are find very it, few. There are very few universities where the athletic department is more powerful than the head football coach. Yeah. Very few. Uh, you you are not wrong there. You are not wrong. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.